Good show. Uh, CM Punk, how does it feel knowing you got the title now and just moving forward with this kind of, not a, almost like a new era for AEW starting off with you in a way, uh, looking to establish more of the brand, so to speak. Are we using these? Do I need to talk into this? <laughs> these are on? Do I need to talk yeah, into no, this? It's, it's just for us. It's, it's not ah, oh, all right. Yeah. Great. Uh, I wish I had my phone so I could see if I have WrestleZone blocked on Twitter or not. That's <laughs> uh, Very fair. Yeah, that's a, that is a, that's a fair thing. They're good. Uh, what was the question? So We're just, off to a rousing start. Just starting off with uh, winning the title and then uh, going to just starting kind of like a new regime or a new start for, how's it kind of feel going with this, with the title starting off now? Um, I think, I don't think this is necessarily a new regime. I, I think this is just the, the onward and upward trajectory that AEW has been on for three years, you know? Um, you can say with the addition of me, you know, we're, we're doing better, but I look at it as like with the addition of Brian Danielson and, and Adam Cole and, and all the talent that Tony brings in, you know, every day is a step forward. And it, it doesn't necessarily start with me being the champion. It, 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 to me, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort. And I say, I like to say, if you want to go, you know, fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. You know, and this is very much a, a, a team effort and a team environment backstage. I, I couldn't do this uh, alone. Obviously, this guy did bring me back to professional wrestling, so all credit to him. It uh, wasn't easy to do. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be the champ. Uh, I take great responsibility in holding that title. And, you know, if, if I'm the face of AEW, I, then I'm the face of AEW, and I'm going to do everything I possibly can. Uh, to not just put more money in my pocket, but his pocket and everybody's pockets backstage and put on the best possible show every single time I can for all of you. Cool. Thank you. Nick? Uh, congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, were talking about the promo exchange you had with, oh, sorry. A lot of people were talking about the promo exchange you had with Paige leading into Double or Nothing, how it felt like there was some real tension there. Um, do you feel like you're um, blending in with this locker room, or do you still feel like you're kind of somebody on the outside trying to find his way in to the regular mix of AEW? Uh, oh, I've, I've grown so wise in my old age that I will, I'll do my best to be uh, as diplomatic as I possibly can with this answer. Um, if there's people backstage uh, that don't like me, it's a minority. And um, if anybody says that nobody wants me here and nobody likes me, I like to say that uh, nobody's don't like me and nobody's don't want me here. Run with that. Fair enough. Danny? Danny Webster, Las Vegas Sun. Um, you kind of touched on it on Dynamite about over 10 years ago in this city. You had a moment that kind of skyrocketed your professional wrestling career. To come back here, 10 years, 11 years later, does it feel like a full circle type moment for you, given what happened back then to now? Yeah, a little bit. I, I, I just did, um, Mark Ramondi interviewed me for ESPN, and uh, I, I said something that I think a lot of people, obviously, on its face will think is ridiculous. I said, I feel like the, the seven years I was out of the ring, I didn't feel was wasted. I feel almost that the 10 years that I spent in WWE was wasted because I feel it is uh, management, owner, booker, whoever's job is to get the most out of all the talent. And I feel that I never was, I reached the potential that I could have given uh, the limitations they constantly put on me. And I feel here, uh, there's no limitations put on myself or anybody, and sky's the limit. So I finally feel like I could reach my potential. So that's what I mean uh, when I say that, God damn, I look back on that time and I'm like, you know, like, what are we doing? T to me, you're always trying to make the most money and put on the best possible show you can, and it felt like... 10 years of fighting uh, silly battles and standing on my own dick, and I'm not in the, the business of trying to stand on my own dick, and I'll say it one more time, I don't do that here, you know? I, 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 
I, I think everybody here can reach their fullest potential, you know? We have a dentist that works here, right? Because I chipped my teeth at some point. She's yeah. very good. Yeah. It fucking sucks. Hey, yeah. Hi, Mike Dagger with Lucha Libre Online. Punk, it's been almost... I for days. sure got you guys blocked, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm I'm pretty I'm sure. Positive. Yeah, okay. Especially after this question, but it will like me even less. But... Um, <laughs> I haven't so, answered yet, so, you know. <laughs> so, it's been around nine years since you've been a uh, world champion. Somewhere else, again. How do you feel? You seem a little tired, but... Well, the show is like fucking 12 hours long. Have <laughs> <laughs> you ever watched a you're wrestling not, You're not tired? Come oh, on. I'm, I'm tired as hell. You know, y'all's match was like two hours. So, yeah, it was, it was great the, match. But my real question is, you had like a little bit of a Twitter war not too long ago with Eric Bischoff, where he, and I quote, he said that you were the biggest financial flop in wrestling. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell there's only one person that can attest to that. I don't know what other people, I can only attest what's happened here and public record and some of these things are a matter of public record because things of freedom of information and stuff so we do you know have over the years a good amount of financial data in pro wrestling i can tell you like no one wrestler has ever come in and made a bigger plus delta financial difference in the history of my company going into this is the third year anniversary this week going into year four no one person has ever made a more positive impact we just did a record pay-per-view buy every pay-per-view he's done a four pay-per-view cycle now every one of them was the record this and uh whether it was all out where he was a huge part of the draw with Darby and his debut, of course, is a huge thing from the first dance, the biggest rampage draw in the history of that show. Uh, the matches, he carried the Friday Night War, which, by the way, is a matter of record in fucking court in the state of California that we won the Friday Night War. Just ask Jerry McDivitt, because he fucking wrote it. And this guy won it versus Matt Seidel, who's a great wrestler. He had another goddamn great match fucking on right Friday on night. One. This one. fucking guy, he fucking did the Friday Night War. He did the first dance. He's done the record double or nothing. He did the record all out in his debut. He did. A, he was a big part of a record full gear. A great match with Eddie Kingston and fucking a bunch of, he wrestled a bunch of young guys, a bunch of veterans in between there. The Will Hobbs, Daniel Garcia, goddamn it. And then he showed up, uh, did the biggest program in terms of everything, TV, box, ever with MJF. And then he did the goddamn main event here. He's the biggest part of financial success in Let's the history of this company. Go. Let's fucking go! We gotta put Ethan behind that. Yeah, good answer. Uh, I will. I will quasi answer that. I didn't have a Twitter war with anybody. I never mentioned him by name, and I think people like that just need to die in the dark. And I don't. I don't need to, to speak their name and stuff like that. I'm focused on what we're doing and the positives we bring uh, to the world. And I don't want anybody to die. <laughs> <laughs> but, but nevertheless, it is bullshit what he said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, don't, we don't need to. to Everybody's got a shitty opinion, so just let them, let them have it. That's a shitty opinion. It's the most bullshit opinion I've ever heard. And like I said, I hope the answer I gave got backed up why he's the opposite. He's actually, for us, the biggest financial success story. In okay, we're the moving company. on. Thank we're you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I, it works me up. Sorry. 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 I know. Sorry. I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, after, well, after the match, you kind of made a joke, uh, kind of in jest and kind of not about uh, never doing another buckshot Larry. Yeah. Um, I mean, do, do, did you feel like when you did that, it was like, oh my God, I made a mistake, or was it just like... Oh, I'm sure you're not going to give me five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's one of, the, that's one of those fucking things. I, um, that, those are the, those are, that's the only time that I've missed it since I've tried it. I did it on TV, and I just, I just, didn't, I just didn't hit it for whatever reason, and, it's, it, and it sucks. But, you know, that's the, that's the fun thing about pro wrestling is... I'm more comfortable when shit goes fucking sideways and not everything needs to look uh, perfect, in my opinion. Um, I'll probably beat myself up about it uh, way too much, uh, but, you know, uh, mistakes happen. So now, going forward as champion, um, are there any names that you're looking forward to more than others? I mean, there's a list of 30 guys yeah. or more that mm -hmm. we could go right through, but is there anyone that you're going like right now, whether it's whoever it is, that you're really looking forward to going against next. Oh, um, well, obviously we got Forbidden Door coming up. So, you know, to me, focusing on that, um, I think Okada, uh, Tanahashi, Osprey, guys like that, I'm looking forward to stepping in the ring with. Uh, AEW talent, 
Um, I always think number one with the bullet is going to be Brian Danielson. Um, I've never wrestled John Moxley. I wrestled Dean Ambrose, so that's that's an interesting that's an interesting matchup. There's still guys on on my list that I've never wrestled with: Jungle Boy, uh, Ricky Starks. Um, I could probably finish out my career wrestling uh, FTR like every day for the rest of my life, and it could be different and, and fun every single time. Um, Will Hobbs is another guy that I, I, I think has all the potential in the world. We got a really stacked roster. It's it's almost it's almost a crime that we can't do everybody justice at once. But I think we're getting there with baby steps, and I think we're learning. Um, I think we may make mistakes, you know, but instead of you know dwelling on it and punishing other people or ourselves, I, I think we, we move on and we just you know try to learn from things. Uh, but Brian Danielson would probably be the first guy that that comes to mind. Very selfishly, I'd love to wrestle him again. Will Will Washington, fightful. Uh, so you famously had two other reigns that kind of kicked off uh, summer in. 2005, the death before December 3, you won the ROH world title and it kicked off what was known as the Summer of Punk. Mm -hmm. uh, fans kind of dubbed 2011 Money in the Bank uh, the Summer of Punk. And now we're going into another summer and here you are, the AEW world champion. How do you feel these this next reign can go the distance and top what you did with specifically the, the first run uh, with Ring of Honor? I, oh God, I don't know. I mean, that's the goal, right? And it's weird, too, because I'm a fall guy. I like Halloween. I like the cooler weather. But summer seems to be uh, my time of year. I, I think we top it by uh, telling great stories and making the focus wrestling, you know? And I, I, I have a, a crazy sandbox full of talent that I, I get to wrestle. and. I think that's how we try to top it, you know. I, I don't, I, I feel like this is the first time in my career I'm more comfortable being the good guy. I've always felt a little shy about it. Uh, I feel more connected to the audience than ever before. It probably has a lot to do with me disappearing for so long. And every day really is a gift. And I, 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 I think that the fans feel that. And I think I project that. It's just like, and this could all be gone tomorrow. And I'm just trying to really relish every single moment I have in the ring and make everything special. That's how we make that the best summer of punk. Just try to make every moment count. Dave Schilling? Yeah. Dave Schilling, LA Times. Um, Two questions, one for each of you. Punk, you have wrestled a lot of the best in AEW so far, and I think this is probably one of your best, at least I think from a crowd response perspective. I certainly love the match. Where do you rank this in the matches you've had so far back in AEW? Tony, you've talked a lot about how you planned out the first champ or the first four champions pretty early in the AEW history. When did you know Punk was going to be number five? You want to go first? Um, where do I rank it? I don't know. I, Dax will probably make me watch it. Um, and, and I don't know. The, the thing that's going to stick in my head is, you know, I, 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 I screwed something up. And it, it, it might take that out of the equation, and it might have felt like damn near perfect match to me just from the crowd response. And I, I feel like they were super into him and me. And it's more of a you know engagement with the audience and and letting them kind of dictate which way we go. Um, it's it's up there, especially when you consider I, I this is the first time here we ever locked up and the first time you ever wrestle somebody who's normally sometimes um, it gets a little sticky, you know. Uh, so as far as matches go, first time we ever touched, I, I think it's it's pretty damn good. But as far as ranking it. I, I, I don't know. I'm, my, I'm honestly my worst critic, and I think everything I do is kind of, kind of meh. So I don't want to. I don't want to rate it. 
I, I'm embarrassed to answer this uh, specifically, especially with uh, the champs sitting here. But I would, so I'm going to kind of dance around your question, but say that we got very close in the pandemic, and then as soon as you know, I think there was a point where there were no fans in the in the seats still, but we were really tight. And then things came together, and the first dance lined up, and it was like this miraculous thing that the United Center was available right before all out right like within a month of when we came back about a month and a half of when we first returned to the road like and it was exactly what he wanted and it, it, i think um i knew he could do it i knew he could do it and what would happen and, and like i always said to you guys from the beginning this isn't some hollywood bullshit comeback he's here every week nobody works harder than cm punk in this company and nobody's done more for this company in the last year than cm punk has and uh so I think in the pandemic, I could foresee that like that, but from the other truth that is a good question that I want to tell, and he knows, and you know, is from the very beginning, like he's he made no secret, like, you know, uh, you, you wanted to see if this thing got off the ground. You didn't want to be a guinea pig from this thing from the very beginning. And you came in at a time when the company had, had taken steps. And then I think like when you and I got to know each other in the pandemic, I think it like opened up, it created a chance for us to like, we had a lot of time at home and start talking on the phone a lot and yeah. became friends. And, and so I think like that created an opportunity. We just didn't know when the fans would come back, but the fans have made this so special from the first dance or the first moment he walked out is one of the great moments in wrestling tonight is such a great moment. And what I would add is from the very beginning of the company, you know, I knew that if we had CM Punk, uh, and, and along with the pe people we got, like I wanted him from day one, but when he finally came, it was been the best stuff we've ever done. Like I was saying, gave financial. It's not just about the financial; it's about the people. And we've never been in a better place because of you. So thank you. Thank, thank you. I've cried like six times today. Uh, it seems to be a theme. Congratulations on Thank your victory. You. Um, AEW are on their way back to your hometown, Chicago, Illinois. How do you feel going into Chicago now as the AEW world champion? Uh, I, I feel a great responsibility, you know. Um, everybody always talks about locker room leaders and, and all this corny shit. And I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think you know, they exist, except certain people lead by example. And to me, that's what leading is, you know. Um, so I'll lead the company into, into Chicago, and uh, I, I'll learn from all my past mistakes and do the best I possibly can to uh, show everybody in the locker room, uh, not necessarily, you know, the one right way to do things, but, you know, uh, how to how to operate and how to conduct yourself as a champion but I'm very excited to, to go back to Chicago um, on top of doing AEW every week I'm filming two television shows so I, I kind of haven't been home in a very very long time and I'm, I'm hoping my schedule clears up a little bit so I get to actually spend like maybe a week or two at home before uh, the pay-per-view but we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, shooting a television show in the in the time of COVID is actually more chaotic than pro wrestling, but um, I'm I'm hoping to uh, just keep working hard, staying healthy, and I mean the show's already sold out, so to me my focus is selling pay per views, you know. But I'm I'm very excited to go home. You're also leading the company into LA, champ. I am the forum. It's so weird. A couple weeks ago, I, um, yeah. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I, I went to the forum to see Bill Burr, and I was like sitting there, and I was like watching Bill Burr, and I just was looking around, thinking, "Man, this is so crazy! All these people came to see this guy." Hey, wait a second, we sold this place out too. I was just, it was like a, it was like an aha moment. I was like, "Wow, that's that's pretty, it's pretty fucking cool. It's a famous, it's a famous building." And um, again, fortunate and grateful every day. Like you know, I can say I sold out the Staples Center, and now I can say part of selling out the forum and it's it's neat you know it's it's exciting to me Bill Burr was here last night too was he yeah he was here Son I of saw a him bitch. he's following me he everywhere great. This guy. okay last question Stephanie hi uh, Stephanie Chase from Digital Spy um, the last time we saw you here probably do one of these you had just gone through this feud where you kind of look back on your whole career and you were very emotional, so I'm wondering about the timing now. 
having just done that, was that good to get that kind of out of your system, like a cathartic moment, so now you can move on to, into maybe another stage as the AEW champion? Yes, it's very much by design. Come back, um, get your feet wet, show that you can still hang, do a bunch of callbacks, kind of catch people up to speed about stuff they may not have seen is a happy accident that uh, Tony bought Ring of Honor at the same time. So um, it's it's a great advertisement for uh, that company. And I, I think MJF growing up a CM Punk fan was such a big part of that, that we got to tell that story, not just like a nostalgic way, we got to tell it through the eyes of uh, a kid who grew up watching it. And, you know, different perspective. It's just pretty super interesting to me that we got to tell that perspective and tell that story. And it's just like just different chapters. And now this for sure is just the next chapter. And that was about the past. And this is about the future. Uh, and I'm excited to tell that story. Thank you very much. Dave, you. Hey, you good? You got anything else? You good? You good? Brian, you good? You all right? You sure? <laughs> I have to get a question. I don't want to kiss your ass here, but... No, <laughs> please, kiss my ass. That's why I'm here. I've been watching your matches, and I feel sorry. this is the best you've ever been as a worker. It's crazy, right? Guy. It's crazy. And, uh, but I wanted to ask your opinion, what you think, because obviously you had the ROH run, WWE run, this run here. Yeah. What do you feel? I think it's so awesome. I think he's right. I think he's totally right. I think uh, it's so cool. I, I I think you're right too, and it's it's really crazy. I don't know. I don't know if it's. I'm just older and I'm wiser. I don't know if it's just there's more. Like I I, I talked about it before. I feel like there's more of a special connection with the crowd in me. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's I'm I'm having so much fun. And I approach things logically all the time, whereas before, somewhere else, I think there was just all this external bullshit that, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. And I don't have that here. There's not all that weird pressure. Um, and I can just kind of go out there and, for lack of a better description, just be an artist, if that makes sense. Sounds super fucking pretentious. This is pro wrestling, right? But I think some of the best guys that ever laced up a pair of boots looked at it that way, you know? And I said it to Mark Ramondi. I, I said, I, I used to think, man, 43 was old as shit. You know, like, shouldn't be in, these guys shouldn't be in the ring, what the fuck? And now I look at it just like, I'm in my prime, you know? And I don't want to just use that prime uh, for me, and that's hard to say because here I am and I have the title, but I, I, I want to I use the time I have now to tell those best stories in hopes that the people I'm working with and the people that are in the locker room watching are like, oh, oh, I get it, you know, like a lot of it comes with experience and putting time in, so I've developed the relationship with the crowd, you know, and I just think this is, it's this place, this place makes me better than I've ever been because I'm able to reach my full potential. It's everything about it. This is uh, this place in the mix of talent and for all its warts, I love AEW. But like this is this is what I dreamed pro wrestling could and should be in America since I was like 15 years old and it took this long to get here and I think that's what helps make me be the best version of myself that I've ever been. And on top of that, I got tremendous talent that carries me through and makes me probably look better than I really am. And that's that's part of it too. I do have a question. Thank yeah. You know what, what was it like as far as, I don't even know if you were, how close you were watching the undercard, but the, the matches that were, the last couple of matches before your match were pretty freaking bright. I mean, did, do you, and you, and you would probably know that before the showing started anyway. I mean, do you feel a lot of pressure because you're, you're you know you're gonna follow some incredible matches. Yes. I mean, is that like, and you, you're, you're on last. You've got to put on a great match because you've got to eat yes. or top what has already happened. Correct. Um, I oddly don't feel the pressure because I think up until this point, the one match that people didn't want to follow on these pay-per-views was probably me. 
regardless of whether there's furniture and, and blood and, and, and all this other stuff, um, I that's the that I, I think that's probably why I'm in the position and I kind of relish being in the position where I think if anybody can do it, it's me. Be, just because I have the experience and I can pay attention to the undercard and I can change things based on what other people have done you know so we're not seeing the same things over and over again and um, you're gonna see repeat moves and stuff like that but uh, I think I can adapt more just because I have the experience better than other people can um, and I know because I have that connection with the crowd and I really think me versus hangman was just a, a, an interesting thing and it was kind of 50 50 for a minute and it might be the first title match that a lot of people kind of felt could go either way. Um, I, I, I think that's why I'm in the position I'm in. It's because I can I can adapt on the fly, and I can kind of change things at the drop of a hat and make it all work and not feel that pressure. Whereas maybe somebody else would like feel that pressure and maybe try to do too much or whatever. And I. I I can just go out there and just kind of listen to the crowd and be like, okay, we got them. We don't need to go completely crazy. And I, a testament to the crowd too, though, because it's a long show and they see everything. And it, they're, they're, they're still up for that main event, man. They, we, we, got the best, we got the best crowd in the world, man. We got the best fans. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank every you. single one of you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.